Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. In today's video, I'm going to try and make the discus keeping hobby cheaper. So I've made a few videos over the months and years about how to keep costs down because discus, the fish themselves being quite expensive, are quite an expensive fish to run purely because they require a higher heat than most fish. In previous videos, we've talked about insulating the tank, uh, keeping the tank in a, a warmer room, and then I've ignored all my advice and have the tank out in the coldest room in my house, which is the hallway. This is a big open room, it's open to upstairs, there's very little heating in here and the front door's right there. We've looked at the power draw of all the equipment, be it lights, pumps, um, obviously the heaters themselves, um, but it's just not cutting it. It's not a good place to have a tank, so I'm going to address that today. I'm going to say goodbye to this tank and relocate these fish into my fish room. So the reason that might work is the fish room is really well insulated, the room itself is heated, so rather than this being sub-zero temperatures in the hallway here, trying to get it up to 28, 30 degrees in the tank, we're already starting at 25, 26 degrees down in the fish room, so I only need to push that one tank up a couple of degrees, which will mean the heaters have to work a little bit less and cost me a little bit less money. As for what we do in here, Still an ongoing debate, I'm not entirely sure. I've got my pond fish, which have spawned like crazy, so I've got 10,000 baby goldfish. We might bring them in, just winter them over here. See how I like having the discus in the fish room. Um, we might go for some kind of cooler or temperate water, something a bit nicer that I can scape. Come back, click that subscribe button, come back and figure out what we do there. Today's job is get these fish moved into a tank and try and make it look a little bit nice. Word of warning, I have been trying to make this video for the best part of a week, if not longer, and keep getting sidetracked with other projects, so if I intersperse other bits with me in different clothes talking about different things, it's because I'm like a little kid distracted by blinking lights. As soon as I see a project to do, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do that, oh yeah, and we'll do a bit of this. I apologise, this is going to be an editing nightmare. So it might seem a bit of a drastic step to just relocate an entire fish tank full of fish, but it is... The number one cost in this is heating it because, like, as I say, it's a very cold room. I'm just not going to be able to get this down anywhere near something that's manageable. And with today's energy prices, it is costing an absolute fortune. So I will at least still get to enjoy them because regular viewers of the channel will know my office is down in the fish room. So I'll actually be spending more time with them. So I think this is going to work. Might not work for everyone, but... For me, it should do the trick. Not entirely sure whether I'm going to split these fish over multiple tanks or just have all these fish in one tank, because the tank can put them in is a little bit smaller. But we will decide as we go, um, as long as I don't get too distracted by my various other projects. Get these out and get them down. This is the tank that we're going to put the discus in. Um, I've scaped it, I've borrowed plants from the tank upstairs as well as other tanks around the fish room. Because I want it to look nice. I'm, I'm not against bare bottom tanks or anything like that, but I do like a planted tank. I've obviously not fully aquascaped this because the whole point of this is budget. I want it to be budget friendly, so I've reused rocks that I already have, bits of wood, plants. I'm not going out and spending loads just to facilitate this move. So we've got it. It's all right. It's fine. It has a few plants. I've used, got some crypts. We've got some nubias. We've got some um, Amazon swords, things like that. It's fine. Um, this tank itself is, is it four and a bit foot, something like that. Um, so it's plenty big enough for the discus, but it'll be a little bit more cramped than the one upstairs, obviously. But should be good enough. Really easy to do water changes down here because I've got all the equipment here. It takes minutes. Um, so it should be a better experience. Um, yeah, and as it's currently 27.4 degrees in here, the heater probably doesn't need to come on either, so <laughs> it'll barely be on. Um, we should be looking good. Some of the other little projects that were distracting me, obviously, is here I had the little nano tank before, which was the shrimp tank with the, the bio rock in it. I just didn't like it because it was too small. It was a little tiny tank taking up quite a big space. So we've had a bit of a, a rejig of some of the tanks. I've moved this bigger tank over. Um, I've got this in here now. It's a bit shorter than this tank and that kind of triggered me a little bit. So I've built a little plinth for it. And I will probably build a little drawer in here because that's quite a nice area to keep some aquascaping tools and things like that. 
Um, but I just wanted to raise the height so it was the same height as this one and it takes up a good amount of the space, if not all the space. I've left it as the shrimp tank. I've added a few different plants, but I've also added my little male betta fish in there. And I know people will be going, oh, you can't keep shrimp with betta. That may well be true. Um, I have done it before quite successfully. It really depends on the individual personality of the fish, I find. So I don't know what this one is, but there are plenty of hiding spaces for the shrimp in there. Um, so we should be good. It's been here for a couple of days now and I haven't noticed them going for the shrimp at all, so we should be okay. Um, so that looks a lot better. I'm quite happy with that. And then the next thing that we've done is this. <sighs> I don't mind the industrial look of having these big dug racking, um, but I kind of had been thinking about for a while whether or not I could face off this with plywood or something like that and build in some little hinged doors um, just to make it look a little bit nicer because I do spend an awful lot of time down here. So if I'm going to spend a lot of time down here, why wouldn't I want to make it as nice as I possibly could? I'm also very, very lazy and very, very skint. So I didn't have loads of money to go out spending on sheets of plywood. So what I did with Mega Tank stand, uh, if you remember, was I wrapped that in an old curtain still got lots more old curtain left so I thought oh maybe I can make some kind of flappy lid and it won't look too terrible hmm. so this was my trial I don't think I can tell I don't love it I've got to be honest it maybe it looks better I don't know so I'm going to have to do the top one as well to be able to see if it makes a difference but just doing this was a proper faff because I had to bring, I deliberately kept all the tanks set back a little bit so as I had a little bit of shelf where I could put things like, I don't know, tubs of food or tools that I was working with. That really didn't work. So I basically had to drain every tank, pull it forward to be flush with the edge and um, just so as it looked a little bit, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great, but maybe it'll look a little bit better if I do everything. So if I do, one down here covering the bottom, one here covering this gap, one there covering that gap. I can still get into everything quite easily. It does hide some of the equipment and the messy water lines and air lines and things like that. I'm not convinced. Let me know in the comments what you think. But the next thing to do is just to get these guys in here. I'll show you that and then we'll have a look at some of the other changes I've made around the fish room. Got a bucket of fish ready to go in. Um, one thing I do like about this it's quite an easy ready-made solution to open it up. If you just use an old magnet cleaner, keeps it open. Um, so same water, same temperature, all that good stuff. I like to just handball discus in um, rather than fishing round and round with a net all the time. It should be a little bit easier. And just pop them in like so. So that's the discus and the tetras in, but this is my transportation method for the cactus plico. Look at the size of this. See his tail in there. He's enormous. He might even be ready for mega tank. I've been a bit skittish about putting him in mega tank. I don't know if you can see the colors in there, but it's fantastic colors. I'm going to put him in the grow out tank just now. So he can live in the grow out tank for a bit. Well, I make that decision and then I've got a bucket full of stir by Corys and I've got all sorts of sizes in here. There's little three or four tiny, tiny, tiny fry to some big fat mamas and papas. I'm not putting them in here though. I'm going to put them into another tank and see if I can get an even bigger breeding group of them. So they're going in one of the other tanks. So fish moves complete. Um, I'll take you around and show you what's where and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what do you think about these? Still not sure. I mean, it's a good proof of concept. I like, I like the look, but I don't like the execution. I have not done a very good job, but maybe I'll live with it for a little while and see how I feel afterwards. But yeah, let me know in the comments. But I think the look looks good, as in having all the tanks up at the front, everything neat in a row, no wasted space down here. I'm happy with that. And um, the discus are in, uh, the tetras settling in nicely. Um, I'll just do a quick run through of all the tanks, shall I? I'm actually, I'm actually quite low on fish at the moment because I moved on a load before the last auction thinking I was going to buy loads and then didn't get a lot of time to do it. But anyway, as we walk in, we've got Humphrey here in the big tank. He's doing fine. Uh, I'll start with the top row up here. Got nothing, plants. I was planning on keeping a couple of tanks just for plants. 
uh, maybe keeping cuttings and things and starting to grow my own bank of plants but yeah just got some odds and ends at the moment and zebra daniels in this tank i'm going to start breeding these guys soon or start giving them a, a helping hand to breed because they do breed on their own fahaka puffer tank nothing in it at the moment he has moved uh, this tank we've got the um, rams one of which you can maybe see there and there uh, i think we've got a trio in here another one up there everything's a bit cloudy because i have done multiple multiple water changes today it's the better tank but it's basically uh, a skittle shrimp tank which basically amounts to brown shrimp if you don't cull or breed selectively even all red shrimp will eventually turn brown and things like that so it's they're, they're kind of orangey that's what it is the betas deciding he's having a little kip up there in the corner he's looking okay i prefer this size of tank i like this little ledge plinth that i've created to just raise the height so i'll probably make, make a drawer there or 3d printer drawer so that's quite good for aquascaping tools and the like and then we have the discus tank so the discus are all in a huff in the corner but most of the tetras are out uh, the discus are all in that corner huddling up with the angels so we've just got discus angels congo tetras alestes tetras um, they're fine oh, i wanted i've got a baby alestes uh, if you can see it in there so that was the one that i found in the sump a few weeks ago but yeah, they're all looking good. Really loving the Congos. They've got some great finage going on on the Congos. Um, but yeah, if my experience tells me anything, the discus down in the corner will sulk like that for a day or two before they start coming out. And then we have bank number two. So we'll start on this one. This is kind of the bank of Cory's. So we've got the the Cory's of the Black Schwartz, Schultz, Schultz Corridoras that I got from Luli, one of the subscribers. Um, a couple of babies in there as well, which I can't see at the moment, but they are breeding. This is the mishmash from the old office tank. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Ember Tetras, Jelly Rasboras, this rather fancy. Uh, uh, he's, not, he's not playing. But anyway, all kinds of small fish in there. A couple of bristle nose a couple of super red bristle noses and that one everyone doing fine these are the the non black schultzy corridoras again breeding like crazy got a bunch of them nothing in this tank that's where the tanks over there was down here is where i have put the corridoras from the discus tank so these are the stairby corridors. They're looking a bit pale or peely wally as they say where I come from. But that I've literally put them in five minutes ago. So they'll probably color up again in a bit. Everything in there from fry, juveniles, to adults. Um, so I really want to get a few more of these and get them breeding. Then we have the Fahaka puffer tank. So he's, this is an upgraded tank. I've moved him from the little tank that I showed you earlier. A little bit of a bigger tank so these tanks here are two and a half feet and um, so a little bit more swimming space more growing room i don't like to throw them in their end tank straight away because i think they just get a bit lost so give them something to grow on a little bit put in a load of extra sand in here and as you can see he's, he started using it to hide himself he's made a couple of little holes and hollows in there and um, but yeah i mean Fahakas have been a favourite of mine for a long time and he is doing really well look at this the snail right there he's not eating it but I'm actually pellet training this guy at the moment so maybe that's a good sign he is starting to take the pellets really well this tank nothing not sure what to do with that yet just got it up and running and that's this entire side done and then we've obviously got more over here these tanks up here i have the blue neon gobies i have the the rainbow fish featherfin rainbow fish in there nothing in these tanks except some in embers embers endlers which i'm going to move over and probably put in one of these tanks and then down here i've got the grow out tank which has the silver dollars 
uh, the Cactus Pleco and the Sand Gobi, or that's not the real name of it, but I forget, I shall put it down there. They're all doing well, growing up, happy. Obviously, we've got Mega Tank, so Mega Tank is my 8 foot by 4 foot by 3 foot um, big tank. We've got Brian and Gordon, the snakehead. Some larger silver dollars, Severums, a couple of Oscars, everyone in there, super happy. Owner, super happy because it still holds water. Yay! And then over here, we've got the Exodons uh, in this tank, which is also cultivating some lovely cyanobacteria. And then down here, we have the Dwarf Rainbows. Blue Neon Dwarf Rainbows. So that was just a quick run through of everything that's going on at the moment. Um, plans are afoot to do some different stuff, but if you're interested in this kind of thing, click that subscribe button. And make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Friday nights, 9pm UK time, we do a live stream, so if you have any burning questions you want to ask me, jump into the stream, say hello, let me know you're here. We do a quiz on a Friday night as well for a bit of fun. Um, yeah, good time was had by all, but thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this either interesting slash entertaining slash useful. I'm going to save money. Might, you might not, but I will, so that's good for me. <laughs> um, Thanks for joining me. See you in the next one. Bye.